It's well established that corn, beans, and squash were widely grown in eastern North America, beginning about a thousand years ago. I've recently been learning about a suite of native species which were domesticated as early as 3,000 years ago, known as the Eastern Agricultural Complex. This year, Jonathan and I decided to grow out a number of these ancient crops in our garden. Most of these plants were abandoned with the arrival of the more fully domesticated corn beans and squash from Mexico, but some have stuck around and become quite important food plants. For example, the sunflower has become one of the world's most important oilseed crops and is grown on a vast scale throughout cold climates of the world, particularly in the former Soviet Union, where it is an essential food plant. Amaranths were domesticated in almost every part of the world for their edible leaves and their high protein seed, and eastern North America was no exception, with several species cultivated, domesticated, and wild cultivated. The same is true for chinopods, like lamb's quarters and quinoa. Our native species were developed for edible seeds and leaves. This year Jonathan and I grew out the native form, as well as a type called wazontle grown for its edible broccolis from Mexico. Eastern native people also domesticated several grass species for their edible seeds, notably one called maygrass. Jonathan and I were unable to get our hands on maygrass, so as a substitute, we grew out some Sonoran panagrass, a little-known species from uh, the southern part of the Colorado River, which is a sorghum-like grain, which produced extremely well for us in our greenhouse, as you can see. We also grew an eastern native domesticate called little barley, which in fact succeeded in making very little barley for us, uh, although apparently it was domesticated and cultivated and the seeds of course were much larger back in the archaeological record uh, than they are today. Um, and that's the case for many of these plants that since domestication was abandoned, the seed size has uh, become much smaller once again. Eastern native people also domesticated a number of grain legumes or dry beans. Uh, this is the hog peanut, which like regular peanuts makes beans underground um, and is uh, very, very easily grown and may be something that in addition to being farmed more properly was wild cultivated because once you plant a little bit here and there at the edge of the forest, it just takes off, uh, fixes nitrogen and fills in an area very nicely with those edible beans. Uh, which you can see here. A native bean in the genus Phaseolus, just like kidney beans, black beans, runner beans, and lima beans, was also domesticated. This one is a perennial, uh, and though the beans are fairly small, um, the dry beans are very nice eating, and uh, the young pods can be eaten as well. And Jonathan and I have had very good luck getting this to grow out. Um, the flowers are beautiful, and uh, we feel like this is something that people could be growing a lot more of. It also has potential for crossing with annual beans uh, in order to create a cold, hardy perennial bean uh, for northern climates, which we're very excited about. A native annual bean, uh, which grows up and down the east coast and, and throughout the eastern part of the country, is the woolly bean. Uh, which I stumbled across um, in a um, sort of a junk pile, a rubble pile in Alabama last year. Uh, this is a lovely bean, and uh, the, the beans themselves are very nice. I cooked some up last year, the dry beans, and we were very, very pleased with them. I also think this has a lot of potential as a cover crop, particularly for warmer, somewhat more long season areas. Groundnut is a species which is fairly famous in permaculture circles for the edible tubers. It also does have edible dry beans and fixes nitrogen. It's recently been taken under domestication in the last um, 20 years or so for forms with larger tubers. Um, this did uh, survive the arrival of corn beans and squash and continued to be cultivated and wild cultivated by native people. Um, right up until the time of colonization, and in fact was essential for the survival of the early Europeans in Massachusetts.
another root crop uh, is the Jerusalem artichoke, which was uh, cultivated uh, up until the time of European arrival as well and remains a food to this very day that's grown. Few people in the U.S. today recognize this plant as a food. This is black nightshade and all around the world the leaves are cooked and the black fruits are eaten. A very important food plant, very nutritious, and this was also cultivated by native people according to the archaeological record um, for uh, perhaps thousands of years and was surely wild managed as well right up until uh, the time of colonization and beyond. We have a number of forms of perennial ground cherry uh, and annual ground cherries which are native that are uh, sweet tomatillo-like fruits which are known to have been cultivated by native people um, in the east and in fact throughout uh, much of North America these species were cultivated and wild managed for their edible fruit. The maypop is our native uh, edible passion flower of the east and this was also cultivated uh, for the edible fruit and probably also for the medicinal value of the uh, flowers as well, although we certainly don't have any archaeological record of that. Uh, this is a really lovely vine. It's, it's fairly aggressive, but um, something that uh, was cultivated and certainly should continue to be cultivated for its very nice edible fruit, which you can see here. Although most squashes arrived with corn and beans, as in a slow journey up from Mexico, there was one squash which was domesticated in the east. Cucurba de Pepo uh, has a variety which grows still wild today in Arkansas and Texas and around the southeast. Uh, and this was domesticated apparently before the arrival of any of the crops from Mesoamerica, any of the squash crops from Mesoamerica. And it's particularly interesting in that they were grown as containers uh, for their edible seeds and also for um, uh, edible fruit, greens, and flowers. The most enjoyable thing that we grew and the most fun thing to research is the bottle gourd, which not only has been grown in Eastern North America for 3,500 years or so, uh, but also it turns out was brought, already domesticated to the Americas over 10,000 years ago from Asia forms that were uh, of the right thickness of the rind for, for bottles and so on were brought thousands and thousands of years ago, already domesticated even before the dawn of agriculture, used for all kinds of things, from water bottles to uh, dipping gourds and serving bowls, um, uh, floats for nets and rafts, uh, birdhouses for beneficial uh, birds that eat insect species, and uh, many, many other uses. It's really one of the most useful plants in the world and one of the ones with which humanity has the most ancient association. Most species of the Eastern agricultural complex were abandoned for the more fully developed corn, beans, and squash when they arrived. A totally logical decision. You would go with corn if maygrass isn't yet fully developed as a crop. But this doesn't negate the importance of this independent domestic development of domestication by native people in the East. And I hope it will also serve as an inspiration to all of us for the further domestication and development of native food plants and an indication of the potential, the vast potential of the uh, edible and useful plants of Eastern North America in the creation of a future food system.